addition, I need to access my office's home network through the internet. And if you think that the hotel network is untrusted, the internet is like the wild, wild west of networks. Once the data leaves my workstation, I have no control over who's accessing it, who can see it as it transmits between WS1 here, through the hotel network, through the internet, and finally to my company's home network. However, this situation can be remedied. We can create a VPN tunnel that goes from my WS1 workstation through the internet and down to a remote access server running VPN software on my company's network. By creating this tunnel and then encrypting the contents of this tunnel, we can, with a relatively high degree of safety, transmit sensitive data through the internet to the VPN server on my company's network and be able to protect it from prying eyes. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the VPN server that's set up on my company's network. And I'm looking at my routing and remote access management utility within Server Manager, and I've selected ports over here. By doing this, I see a listing of all the ports that are currently available on the VPN server for remote connections. And as you can see, I have SSEP ports, I have PPTP ports, I have IKE V2 ports as well. I also have a modem port. Now, there's an important distinction that you need to be aware of when looking at these different ports. These ports are logical ports, meaning that they represent connections that can be established through the internet, You're probably over an ethernet network connection. I also have a physical port, however, and that is my 56K modem that I have connected here, which can also be used to create a remote access connection, but it will be created via dial-up rather than a VPN connection through the internet. Now, as you can see, I have a very limited number of connections available for each VPN protocol. There should be about five or so for 